Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you one of my favorite techniques that has saved me a lot of time over the years, and that is creating a static mock-up of what I'm going to be creating before I actually end up creating it. And the way I'm going to explain this is by showing how I was able to use this technique to improve a small part of the crew.com website. And hopefully what you will see will apply to something that you're doing as well. So everybody will hopefully save some time by employing some of the techniques that I'm going to show you in this video. All right, let's get started. So what I have here is a pretty simple part of the you know, product site. It has some UI here. I have a, an area where I have an image of my book. And it's pretty plain. It's pretty boring. And it's not really very informative nor inviting. So what I want to do is think of ways of making this a little better. And there's several ways I can do this. One thing is I can dive into the HTML and start making tweaks and just experimenting with things live as it would look. This is a valid approach, but in many ways though, dealing with selectors, style rules, all of that, it really tends to get in the way of me having the full freedom to experiment with and try out new ideas. So my general preference is to use an image editor where I'm not limited by any kind of platform or language limitation, but more of just with tools I have available in whatever editing tool I'm using. So you can use any image editor that you want, but what I'm going to be using is Fireworks. So the first thing I'm going to do is this. This is my entire page, this is my browser, and I want to modify this section. But in order to make this prototype, or my, in order to make my mock-up actually more realistic, I need to have a full context of what I want to edit. So even though what I want to change is just this particular portion, I want to get a screenshot of the entire area so that I am actually prototyping as it would look live on the page. Wouldn't be exactly pixel perfect, but it's close enough. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this area right here. And once I'm taking a screenshot, I'm going to go to my image editing tool of choice and paste the screenshot in. I'm, I'm a big Fireworks fan. You know, a lot of you like Photoshop or any other tool out there. Doesn't matter. Any of the tools that you know you're comfortable with are fine. I'm going to be using Fireworks, and I won't be using anything that's too crazy. So as long as the image editor you want to use supports cutting, copying, and cropping elements and all that, you should be fine. All right, I've taken a screenshot of this page, and I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here. All right. So what you see here is a static version. It's basically a static version of the crib.com homepage. And let me zoom in a bit so that I can see exactly what's going on here. And so now I'm going to break some of these layers apart so that I can get some space here. So I'm going to select this element. I'm just going to cut this entire region here. And the reason I'm doing this is pretty simple. As part of being able to modify this, I want to have some content up here below this. So that requires me to have some space to actually work with. And also, let me go ahead and just cut the image, this image out as well, and make it its own separate item. This way I can manipulate and move it around if I, if I decide to do that. And everything else can just stay as is. So I'm going to go ahead and just lock these layers for now, just to save me some time. And so when I'm selecting or doing any kind of range selection, I'm only selecting the elements that I really care about. OK, so now that I have my environment, I guess, set up in Fireworks, what I'm going to do is start thinking about what I want to show here. So first of all, I want to show some text that indicates what exactly is going on here. And I want this to be links. And I want to, I want to be consistent with the style that I have here, which is a link with an icon standing right next to it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the text element and just type in learn more. That's definitely something I want to follow. And notice the font I'm using here. The font I'm using is exactly the same as the font that is used on the website. And that is actually very important because the typography you use has a great, you know, greatly influences other visual elements you might be you know, experimenting with. So try to use the font that is going to be most representative of what you will see in the final product. So I have my learn more text here. And I also want to have a few more links. Let me just copy learn more and paste it below it. Learn more, learn more. And I essentially want to have a learn more as well as an easy way for people to buy the book, both in the Kindle form and the paperback form, very easily. So I'm going to change this to buy paperback edition. And I'm going to change this to buy Kindle edition. 
So very quickly, I was just able to independent thinking about, you know, student unordered list, you know, what kind of class is going to have, how is it going to be centered, all that, not worrying about it. I'm an image editor. All I care about is the final appearance of whatever it is that I'm creating. That's one of the beauties of a static mockup is that you don't have to worry about those little, you know, pesky implementation details, which I will be worrying about shortly, but just not right now. So learn more by paperback edition, by Kindle edition. All right. So now let me get some icons in. So for the icons, I used a very excellent and typo icon set that you can use very, you know, you can find freely on the web and use. So for learn more, I'm going to be using an icon that is, I guess, more representative of learning. Let's say this pencil icon. I'm just paste it in here. The size is kind of arbitrary, but that's okay. We will fix that shortly. For the paperback, I'm going to use a picture of a book. And for the Kindle edition, I'm going to use a picture that is more representative of, let's say, a phone or a handheld device. So let's see, there has to be one that is that would fit. Ah, here it is. Right here. All right. So now I have my three icons. I have learned more that I have three links here that correspond to these icons that I want to ultimately associate with them. So the font that this, I mean, the, uh, the icons, the size they're in right now are definitely too large. Let me ensure that, let me resize it. Let me make them 20 pixels in height. 20. All right, so now let me just put them all here. Learn more. All right, let me, let me give them some color to be consistent with the, the more vivid color scheme that I'm trying to go for on the site these days. So let's give learn more, uh, let's give it a nice orange color. Paperback edition, let's go with the same blue that is available here, just to, you know, little, little things like that. For the Kindle edition, let's go with a dark gray. All right, let's get some spacing sorted out. All right, so now I have my learn more by paperback and by Kindle edition links associated with an icon. Let's get the height of it just right. And this looks okay, but it kind of seems disjointed from the image right here. And I can't think of a clever way of actually associating them with that. So whenever I run into a problem where I don't know what to do, as you can tell from the site, I just add a horizontal gray line. And today is going to be no different. So let me make this a light gray. I made a gray line. And that looks, looks a little better. You know, I think that uh, is a good choice. But so now, from having done this, I can see that it's an improvement over what is currently visible right here. But the downside is it seems too wordy. Like, for example, is the word bind up here twice? I don't know. I, OK, probably not. So let me replace it to buy paperback or Kindle. Edition, edition, and then have each one have like an underline, but that looks kind of weird as well. But the end result is also this. That looks kind of weird as well. And let me have to change it to, let me change the icon to that of a shopping cart. There's a shopping cart icon I saw somewhere here. There's one right here. And let me paste this in here. And let's make the size of this one also 20 pixels. Make this a make this a green color, just because we can. Okay, by Kindle edition, different green color. This looks okay, sort of, but again, not thrilled with having so much text here now because like the alignment is now a little bit off. Learn more has so little text here, and this suddenly has a, a lot of text. And on high DPI screens, and if you were to zoom in, for example, I don't want the text to crop. And right now, it's getting very close to cropping. And let me spell two correctly while I'm at it. So instead, I'm just going to change it to this. Let's say buy on Amazon.com. Because go to Amazon.com, you can actually find both the Kindle and the paperback editions on the same page, very prominently displayed. So it makes no sense to do it this way. And and because Amazon has a very you know orangish color to it, I'm going to give it give my icon an orange color as well. Let's make it a little bit darker. Okay, it's a little too dark. That's better. And I'll change this to the blue color from 
right here if I click on the right item. Or let's just make this one green, just to be a little vivid. All right, so this seems like a much better option, you know, compared to what was there before. Lighter gray. All right. So with that though, so now let me move, let me adjust the spacing now. Let me unlock the layer where this where my ad and the rest of the content is. Let me zoom it up a bit. And this has other problems, especially where the spacing is good, but these items just seem to blend in with the content here, doesn't seem to quite fit in. And especially the connection between the graphic at the top of the book and the Kindle edition with these icons seems to be missing. So one thing that I've done in the past, and I'm gonna read, you know, show you right now, is I often tend to put a background color to ensure that the regions that I'm trying to link together are visually linked. And I'm gonna do that right now. So let me just draw a rectangle, no border, and just place it right here. And let me just layer a bit. All right. So I have my rectangle and let me just remove the background from this particular image right here. Now I do have a source image where I can get the perfectly transparent version where I wouldn't have to do what I'm about to do right now, which is crop out the edges, which is going to leave some artifacts behind. But for what I'm doing right now, which is just trying to experiment with things, this imperfection is okay. So I'm just going to remove the background and you can now see the image displayed here. You know, if I zoom in though, you can definitely see what I'm referring to, which is the the weird pixelations where the shadow meets the edge of the, the rectangle. But again, that's okay for now. So I have this background right here. And I think this background actually looks kind of nice. I think this actually adds a decent amount of value. Let me change the height of this bit to 325. This horizontal line needs to be shorter now. Let's make it 230. Let's make it 230 actually. Yep. And center it among right here. This looks good. And the last thing I'm going to do is, if you look at the top of the header, I have this like very faint horizontal diagonal lines that are going through. It might be cool to actually see what it looks like if I add it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a texture. And let's see, line diagonal. Let's add the diagonal lines in. It's very subtle, but you can definitely, definitely see it. And especially if you were to have a screen with a higher contrast ratio like I have right now. And so this seems pretty good. You know, I can now take what I have here and then start working on how to actually implement it into the HTML and CSS that would make its way right there. But here's the thing though. Notice that by me being in Fireworks, a tool that is purely focused on just pixel, laying pixels out essentially, and drawing shapes and being able to arrange items in layers, I was able to very quickly get the visual design I wanted without thinking about or wasting time on experimenting with the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript at a very early stage itself. Because here's the problem, right? If I start fiddling with the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and I've gotten to a point where I invested way too much time in getting even, let's say, a subpar experience like I had maybe a few moments earlier, my, I would be more hesitant to make changes because I just know how much effort it took for me to get there in the first place. So a tool like any image editing tool that abstracts away those details and allows you to focus on only the design is great for creating static mockups. And by having done this in about 10 minutes or so, I was able to save what would take me at least an hour or maybe even more of experimenting with a live version of an HTML and CSS. So you definitely don't want to pick a mockup or static mockup tool that is going to make you take up more time than it would take to actually implement the real thing. So be careful about that as well. So if, you know, if you're not familiar with Photoshop, uh, but you are from, let's say, Image Ready or some other tool, use that other tool. You know, don't bother learning a new tool just so you can be good at creating a mock-up because that kind of defeats the purpose of you doing all this to save you some time. So, all right. So, I hope you found this one pretty useful. Let me go back and just wrap this up. As always, to learn more, go to curve.com for the forums. You can post your questions there, and I or someone else will gladly answer it. And you can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. I'm always there posting random stuff. So if you like random designery things being posted, along with the random lolcat, you know, follow me or follow, you know, friend me on Facebook. And of course, if you like to find other time-saving tips, especially if you like animations, check out the book that I've been just describing, creating the, the ad for, on paperback and Kindle editions on Amazon. All right, guys, I will talk to you guys later.